Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an ultra tiny 2-in-1 that I actually really like. Now there are a few things here that I'd love to see changed, but as you can see, I mean, this thing is super tiny. And in the past, we've taken a look at a very similar unit. This is basically an upgrade, and there are quite a few upgrades here. Straight off the bat, performance has been increased with the CPU they opted to use. We've also got more I.O. on this unit, and once we flip the top up, you can see we've got a full backlit keyboard. The power button dubs as a fingerprint sensor. We've also got an optical mouse, so there's not a traditional trackpad on this, and this is something you will have to get used to. But overall, it's not a bad looking unit. And when it comes to the display, we've got an 8 inch IPS with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. And usually when we see these smaller 2-in-1s or smaller laptops in general, we've got something like a 1280 by 800 display. This is actually pretty sharp and it is running at 60 hertz. The keyboard comes all the way out to the edge, as you can see here. It's backlit, just a single zone white LED. We've also got that optical mouse right in the middle with our dedicated left and right mouse buttons. When it comes to I.O., over here on the right hand side, we've got a micro SD card slot, full size USB 3 and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Moving over to the left hand side, full function USB-C 3.1. So this does do video out. You can also charge the unit up over USB-C, mini HDMI and another full size USB 3 port. Upgrading the storage on this thing is super easy. As we saw, it does have a micro SD card slot. But around back, we can easily get to the 2242 M.2 SSD. This came pre-installed with a 512 gigabyte drive, but you can go up to two terabytes with this thing. When it comes to the overall specs of the version we're gonna be taking a look at in this video, we've got the Intel N150, four cores, four threads, up to 3.6 gigahertz, and it's got a 24 CU Intel UHD iGPU with a clock up to 1000 megahertz. This is a nice little boost over the N100, and the company does have one listed with the N200 and the N300. If I can get my hands on one of those, I really want to take a look at it. But this is the one we have today, and this does have 12 gigabytes of non-user upgradable RAM running at 4800 megahertz, an 8-inch 1920 by 1200 IPS display, 512 gigabyte 2242 M.2 SSD, and a 26.6 watt hour battery. The company claims up to six hours of use and it would be possible with the screen brightness down, but I've been getting around four hours of use out of this with the screen brightness all the way up and I'm in performance mode with this unit. So the main appeal is obviously gonna be the form factor here and to tell you the truth, this will slide in my back pocket. It's not very comfortable there, but if you've got like a crossbody bag that you carry with you, you could put this right in it, no problem at all. And this is running Windows 11 right out of the box. Of course, you could install something like Linux if you want to. Easy login with that fingerprint sensor. I was actually pretty impressed that when I set it up, it asked me to set the fingerprint up. I didn't expect this thing to have one built in. The optical mouse or the optical trackpad here isn't too bad. It's something you will have to get used to and I've never really been a big fan of them. But we've also got that touch screen. And if you were to use that optical mouse, we also have the left and right mouse buttons down here. Some people would be able to type on this with two hands, but usually I just hold it with one. Use the other one to type, and that's while I'm holding this thing up. Of course, you could always set this down on the desk and type on it just fine with this keyboard here. It's got AC Wi-Fi built in, and I've been doing some web browsing with the built-in Edge browser, but I also installed Chrome here. That's mainly what I've been using with it. And yeah, I mean, signal strength, pretty decent. As long as you've got good internet, you're not going to have an issue browsing the web on this thing but it's obviously not the most powerful small form factor laptop. We've got that N150, which is a lower end chip, lower power draw, and we've only got four cores and four threads. But this does work great for web browsing, email checking, video playback from YouTube, and this chip will handle 4K if you've got a 4K monitor connected. Right now we're only at 1080, and since we've got a two-in-one, there's several different ways we can set this thing up. But believe it or not, one of the main things I've been doing with this device is gaming on it, be it emulation or PC games. Now we're not gonna be running Cyberpunk 2077 on this thing, but there are a ton of indie games that are gonna run just fine. Obviously, something like Baltro is basically gonna run on anything, and with the brightness all the way down running this game here in balanced mode, I can get around five hours of runtime out of this thing, and yeah, you can waste five hours playing this game, trust me. But this is a super easy one to run, and now I wanted to test out some older PC games, and then we're going to move over to some emulation like PSP, GameCube, and even PS2, because the N150 in this thing actually offers some pretty impressive performance for what we have. 
I'm using an Xbox controller connected to the Bluetooth. Half-Life 2, 800p, medium, over 230 FPS on average. We could go up to 1200p, but given the display on this is only 8 inches, it's definitely on the smaller side, so these lower resolutions actually look pretty decent. When it comes down to it, this N150 does handle these older titles pretty good. Here's Dirt 3, 800p, medium, over 60 FPS. I mean, this is fully playable here. Next up, we've got Hades 2. Indie games also perform pretty decent on this, especially 2D indie games. You want to go with something like Shredder's Revenge or even the newer remakes like Ninja Turtle remakes and the Marvel vs. Capcom collection, it's going to run just fine on this little system. And of course, you could always do cloud gaming with this or stream from another PC if you wanted to, but I wanted to run some of these native. But now it's time to jump over to some emulation, and I've always had really good luck even on the N100, so the N150 should offer better performance with a higher clock on the CPU and GPU, and it definitely looks like it does. Here's PSP using PPSSPP, 2x resolution, DirectX 11 back end, and there's no doubt we could go up in the resolution with this, up to 4x is just fine on the N150. And I know it's a bit hard to see afterburner running, but this is pulling under 5 watts playing this game. Moving over to something a bit harder to emulate, we've got some GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, 720p DirectX 11 backend, Automotalista, kind of my go-to test here. This runs amazingly at 720p, and we're under 8 watts, so it's fluctuating between 5 up to 7.1, not too bad here, and that's just the TDP on the CPU. Plus, we're at 720, so if you don't mind running this at native, it will draw less. Since we were already using the Dolphin emulator, I figured we'd go with some Wii. Tatsunoko vs. Capcom 720p, DirectX 11 back in. Looking pretty good until we get a lot of particle effects on screen. You'll see it kind of fall on its face, and I've seen this quite a bit with lower end chips. This could probably be ironed out using a different back end. We're using DirectX 11, but instead of changing that, I'm just going to lower the resolution. We'll go down to the native Wii resolution and it's totally fixed. So even with all of those particle effects on screen, still running at a constant 60. But one of the most impressive things here is PS2 emulation with the N150. 720 with this game, and with the next one I did have to drop down to 1.75, but yeah, it actually handles PlayStation 2 emulation. So I just took the resolution down to 1.75 instead of being at 720, and it's not that far off. So you can see this is one of those games that kind of fluctuates the FPS anyway. Overall, it's performing way better than I thought it would. Overall, I've really enjoyed using this 2-in-1, and I will try to get my hands on the more powerful variant with that N300 or even the N200. We'll definitely see better performance over the N150, but uh, if they keep that same battery size, battery life will be decreased. And realistically, I'm seeing around 4 hours of runtime out of this thing, and that's under continuous use. I'm sure in power saving mode from Windows and the brightness on the screen turned down, you could probably squeeze 6 hours of runtime out of this. But the way I like to have this thing set up with the screen brightness up in performance mode, I'm seeing around four hours. And this kind of got me thinking. I do love this form factor. I would love to see something like this hit the market with a Snapdragon X chip. Now the Elite might be a little too hardcore for it, but the Snapdragon X that runs Windows really well would be awesome in something like this. You can get much better performance than the N150 can put out, and you'll see pretty great battery life out of that thing too. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you're interested in learning a little more, I'll leave links to their official website down below. It's usually out of stock and the price does fluctuate. I've seen it go anywhere from $250 up to $350, which is definitely on the higher end for something like this. 
I'd love to see one coming in at around $130. That'd be really nice with the same specs we have here. I think it could be done by the right manufacturer, but right now, this is the one that I've got. And if you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links in the description. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.